This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. Fresh news, smart talk, all day. The views and opinions of the hosts and guests are their own and do not necessarily reflect the position of the management and staff of Guardian Networks. This morning, and welcome back to Guardian Radio 96.9 FM, your station for fresh news, smart talk, all day. You are on the clock with Erin Green on this good Thursday, the 8th of July, 2021. And on the clock, we engage organizations, institutions, social and cultural leaders, and ordinary people to better understand the impact of public policy, private sector development, and emerging social and consumer trends. On the clock, we have conversations that help us understand and navigate a rapidly changing Bahamas. Today's show is brought to you by the Department of Inland Revenue. Before we get into the show, I have a brief message about the Family Island Development Act. Under the Family Island Development Act, any resident, prospective resident, or business owner on Andrus or in southern islands of the Bahamas 18 years and older can apply at mygateway.gov.bs for exemptions on any of the following items purchased locally or internationally. Building materials, materials, electrical fixtures and materials, household furniture, furnishings and appliances, hardware supplies, commercial equipment and related fittings, IT, hardware and software, excluding cell phones, tablets, or personal digital assistance solar panels and related equipment and fittings, business license and real property tax. This message is brought to you by the Ministry of Finance. Well, good morning to my listening audience. We are only a couple of days away from independence, and my guest today is going to be Mr. Freddie Munnings, Jr. And I'm going to ask him to join the conversation just after I do a little housekeeping. So let's start here. Here's how you can tune into the show. Of course, on your radio dial, tune into 96.9 FM. But we're also streaming live audio and video on GuardianTalkRadio.com. You can listen on TV on Cable Bahamas Channel 969 or download the Guardian Radio app for your Apple or Android smart devices and listen to our audio feed or watch us on our video feed right there on the Guardian Radio app. You can text us. On the Guardian Radio text line, 422-GR96, that's 422-4796, that's powered by BTC, standard text rates apply. You can call us at 323-6232, or 325-4316, or 325-4259. Now, Mr. Freddie Munnings Jr. will be joining me via Zoom. This appreciate that. Uh, we meet, need to make sure that Mr. Munnings can be safe if he doesn't need to come into the studio. Then he shouldn't come in. we got to protect our cultural icons. Uh, but Mr. Munnings, I think our producer will uh, let you into the room in just one moment. Before we get there, though, there are a couple of things in the news that I want to touch on. First of all, Japan declares state of emergency two weeks before Olympics due to start. After looking at today's paper, I don't see any indication that Bahamian athletes will be withdrawing or pulling out of the Olympics, so I say to them, Godspeed, pretend like you in the Bahamas, and do what your Grammy would tell you to do. After you finish your race, go bathe and go to bed. Go rest up yourself. Don't get into any trouble. Don't go gallivanting or spilligating or hanging out with people. Protect yourself. Keep yourself safe. Most importantly, it's about keeping yourself safe. Don't mind us. We just want you to be in your peak form when you're representing the Bahamas so you could win us a goal. But other than that, focus on yourself. You know, we're really glad that you're sacrificing for us in this really difficult and complicated time. On another note, since we celebrate national champions, Roy Seligman will be uh, competing this evening in the Scripps National Spelling Bee in the United States. And we want to send a massive shout out 
to Roy Seligman. Big man, the whole Bahamas is riding behind you. And let me show you a vibe. Here's what we care about most, the effort. When I was in high school, in grade 10, I got an A for effort on a grade, on a report card. I got an A for effort in math and a C for achievement. And my uncle did fuss me out. And I looking at him like, but boss, I got a whole A in the class, you know. And he looked at me and he said, I see the A clearly. He said, but I see the C for effort on the side of it. And that's why we're not celebrating the A. Because if you'd put in A's worth of effort, you could have gotten an A plus, plus, plus. So I want to say to Roy Seligman, it is the effort that you put in that we celebrate most. You just try your hardest, and we will be right here backing you. A couple of more notes. First of all, I want to say to my favorite uh, COVID testing site, Bay Street Medical, please, you need to work with businesses or property owners in the immediate community to create a parking lot. I could think of a number of instances through West Street and West Street Corner, like maybe you could speak to the Greek church and ask them if you could use their parking lot to accommodate your customers so that pedestrians and regular road users don't have to accommodate your customers in the midst of a construction zone. See, I ain't just bashing, you know. I can give you good ideas that you probably pay in consultants to give you, but they're not giving you. Please find a parking area for your customers so they will stop inconveniencing and making it more dangerous for Bahamian pedestrians on the road. And let me not forget, the very same tourists that you are trying to accommodate, you're making it dangerous for them as well. Just another quick note, as you head west on West Bay Street towards Nassau Street, you will see there is a massive hole in the road opposite Margaritaville. Please, somebody, please, please come and fix it. Yesterday, I watched a gas tanker try to na navigate its way around it, and I don't blame them because the pothole is right next to a manhole, and so I'm sure he wanted to make sure that the weight of his vehicle didn't compromise the infrastructure in the ground at that point. Which leads me to another point. Dear Water and Surge, Shirley Street East, just west of the gas station, is still leaking. The ground is leaking. And I thought maybe I was going to be in an episode of the Hillbillies, Be Beverly Hillbillies, but um, no, alas, there is no oil springing up from the ground. It is just water the good water that I and other taxpayers have to pay for with our own money. Now, all of this to say that it seems as if a poor quality of patchwork and road repair has been revealed by rain. I wish it was in were inspectors that revealed this poor quality patchwork and road repair, but it was rain, or at least... You know what? I'm glad. I don't have to pay the rain for that, for revealing poor and shoddy patchwork. I don't have to pay them because, unfortunately, I'm still paying inspectors that don't seem to be inspecting. It is 1018. Kermit, is my guest in the Zoom room? Not yet? Ah, oh, boy. Well, here's what we'll do. Let's go to a quick break. Let me see if I could get onto him because... How could we be celebrating independence if we're not talking to cultural stakeholders in the country? We will be right back after this break. As a people, Bahamians are anxious about the future. 
feeling down and out? Unsure in these unprecedented times? We need to believe that love's coming back. Join us Tuesday, July 13th at 11 a.m. at lovescomingback.com for the virtual launch of Love's Coming Back, an inspiring new anthem from Grammy Award-winning founding member of the Eurythmics, songwriter, producer Dave Stewart, which will premiere globally at 12 noon. Presented by Basic Records, Bahamas National Trust, and BrylandAid.org. Like what you're hearing on the show? Want to support the conversation? Sponsor on the clock today. Call Janet Lees at 302-2304. That's 302-2304. Be the solution. Sponsor on the clock of Aaron Green. Where she dissects, we discuss, and you decide. Why like you crazy? This one for all the girls who know they can ride. So come on, girls, show me what you get. And welcome back to On the Clock with Erin Green on Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. We're still trying to sort out these technical difficulties. My guest is going to be calling me in in a second, uh, but I've got some text to read here. Good morning, Erin. Good on them Bahamian athletes get to act like they're in the Bahamas home by 11 p.m. But that's right. That's how you're going to protect yourself. See, these are extraordinary times. So you got to be prepared to do extraordinary things. And you get caught up. In the energy at the Olympics, you know, because you're a superstar and it feels like you could do anything. But you have to remember to govern yourself and discipline yourself. And also remember that it's not just about what you, your, like your personal discipline and integrity, but it's about what could potentially happen to you while you are in public spaces and not in control of your environment. Somebody could slip something in your drink while you out there having a good time, right? So we don't want that to happen either. I, I think that's good advice. I don't even feel like an old woman today. Let me say like a Grammy. I ain't nothing wrong with being no old woman. But um, y'all pee and go to bed by 11 p.m. There is a large grave on Palm Tree Avenue before the stop light at Market Street. Dear text, of, I, I just want to say here, if this is... An extremely important message, this is not the way that you should share it with the public, right? Um, and I'm just going to pretend that what you're saying is the hopes and the dreams of the residents of Market Street are buried in that grave because they tire of the political culture and rhetoric that prevents the proper and authentic development of their communities. Good morning, Aaron. Did you mention that DeAndre Ayton and the Phoenix Suns plays the second game of the NBA Finals today? They are leading the zero, Series 1-0. Thanks. Thank you for that. I did forget. I want to say congratulations to DeAndre Ayton and the whole Phoenix Suns and all the Bahamians playing in the NBA and all the people playing in the NBA. Um, but especially to DeAndre, you worked hard for it, buddy. I don't even pay attention that much to basketball anymore, but I know you worked hard for it, and the whole of the Bahamas is right here cheering with you. Another text, great show as usual. After the government raised VAT twice, my pocket is leaking. Buddy, you could afford to have holes in your pocket. You're doing very well. You know, thank, you, you need to find, um, find some way to, to find the silver lining. You're doing very well. You, you could afford holes. I can't even afford insurance. Talking about, I can't even afford to die. Oh, the texter responded and said, it is a pothole. Ah, I got you. Yes, a large car grave, a large money pit, right? In a system where the 
people responsible refuse to acknowledge it is their dereliction of duty that caused your injury or damage or loss. Uh, boy, people think it's a joke. It's not a joke. These potholes and thing, they are dangerous. And it's not just a danger to cars because drivers act irrationally and would rather risk injury to a pedestrian or a human than damage their car in that pothole. You know, sometimes people think that their, their, their little lapses are no big deal, but they really, really impact the system in a negative way. I see I got, I think I got my guest on the line. It's a good time. Good morning, Mr. Freddie Munnings Jr. How are you? Good morning, Ms. Green. I am doing very well. Thank you very much. Uh, happy, pre-happy independence to your entire listening audience and to all of our friends, particularly in the cultural communities of the Bahamas and wherever they're listening all over the world. Unfortunately, we were unable to get onto the Zoom, so I can't see you and you can't see me, but I can hear you. And uh, we're back to the uh, old school uh, form of communication. So. It's a great day in the Bahamas, so thank you for the opportunity. Absolutely. Now, Mr. Freddie Munnings, Jr., I know who you are, and I know plenty of people know the voice, but for younger generations of Bahamians, or for Bahamians less connected to the cultural world than I am, or certainly you are, could you introduce yourself briefly to the audience? Okay, very briefly. Um, son of uh, Freddie Munnings, Sr. and Mavis uh, Farrington, uh, went to school at Aquinas College, uh, which was known back in the day as the art school. I mean, this was the school where people would go who were really interested in the uh, performing and visual arts. In addition to business, it started as a business school, if, if, if you can imagine, and then it evolved into, it became known as the arts and entertainment school. Uh, I got my basic training in music under the direction of people like uh, Mr. Andrew Curry, uh, Sister B. Elizabeth Mary, because, of course, it was a Catholic school. Mm -hmm. um, good basic training there, and then um, went on to Florida Memorial College, now university, uh, where I majored in business administration and um, um, did most of my studies, though, in music and, and arts and theater. And after that, I studied at a professional theater at North Miami Playhouse in Miami, Florida, and managed a cultural arts center in Miami for a number of years before I went into uh, full-time uh, professional entertainment, basically on Miami Beach. Uh, if you know Miami Beach, uh, from the Fountain Blue to the Doral to the Breakers Hotel in uh, West Palm Beach, and traveled all over the United States and Canada and the Caribbean and now I'm back home. I came back home in the 80s, and uh, this has been home for me. It'll always be home for me, uh, even though I had a very successful uh, career in the United States and traveling, uh, performing uh, throughout Canada and the Caribbean. So that's basically it. Uh, in 2016, I was named as uh, the cultural ambassador to the Republic of China. Uh, which was a very interesting experience, and uh, I had a two-year stint there where we were we took our uh, Bahamian entertainment and uh, out to China on three uh, cultural admissions. Uh, did a lot of work in the New Orleans Jazz and Heritage uh, Festival Foundation in New Orleans, and took a number of troops there. Exposed junk canoe and music all over the world, literally. And so uh, it's been a wonderful career, still going on. Still doing a lot of stuff locally. However, I must say, um, Ms. Green, that the entertainment industry in the Bahamas has a lot to be desired today uh, for many, many reasons. Uh, back in the day, uh, in the 40s, 50s, 60s, when my dad was uh, very much involved um, with the industry, uh, owned and operated a facility called the Cat and Fiddle. Mm -hmm. It was like an incubator where bohemian artists got exposed to entertainers literally and, and artists, world-class artists, literally from all over the world. We were unable to go to many of those places where they were from, but he brought them here, and he brought them here primarily for bohemians, not for the tourists. And that's an interesting point, because the Cat and Phil, those who do not know, was located at the junction of Poinciana Drive and Nassau Street, right now where the Commonwealth Bank is located. 
that was the site of the world famous Cat and Fiddle nightclub, oh. and all of the world class entertainers from Count Basie's band to Nat King Cole to Sam Cooke, Jerry Butler, anybody who was really famous during that era in the 50s and 60s literally came to the Cat and Fiddle. There was an article published in the Miami Herald in 1962 lambasting Paul Anka, who was the original artist of the song My Way and many other great songs. Mm -hmm. They lambasted Paul for coming to the Cat and Fiddle and in the Bahamas as opposed to taking an engagement on Miami Beach at the Fountain Blue. And they said, well, what is it that you find in the Bahamas that we can't offer you here in Miami on Miami Beach? No. And Paul just really said, because of the relationship that he had with my dad, and he loved the Bahamas. So that was the kind of era. Uh, entertainment really was king during that time. It called the glory years of entertainment in the 50s, 60s, and 70s, until the onslaught of disco and the mega hotels that brought the entertainment into the hotels that literally destroyed the nightclub industry uh, in New Providence and throughout the Bahamas. Okay. I know I said a lot, so I'm going to shut up now and let you ask some questions. Okay, wow. So let's, I, I almost want to start at the end, but first of all, okay. the story of the cat and fiddle, uh -huh. has that been documented or formally yet in well, writing or on film? Interesting question. My brother Raphael Munnings, who was the original artist on Funky Nassau, which is another story. We may get into that uh, if you wish. This is the 50th anniversary of Funky Nassau the first record in the history of the Bahamas uh, that went certified gold all over the world. But the, uh, the Cat and Phil's documentary is currently being produced and, 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 uh, by my brother Raphael and his family, uh, um, Wendy and Rafi, who are experts in the field of uh, videography as well as entertainment. And he is currently working on that as we speak. So yes, it is being done. And we're also toying with the idea of doing a movie about that era, because I can tell you, Aaron, a lot of people don't know that history. And that really speaks to the Bahamas, because the Cat and Phil and other establishments like it, like the Zanzibar, for example, like the Silver Slippers, for example, and other mega entertainment uh, enterprises that existed in the Bahamas were like incubators, as I said initially not only for entertainment, but for social development, for political advancement, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So these were more than just entertainment. These were places where the Bahamian people, particularly the black Bahamian people, owned and operated and developed and were able to independently fight for the rights of Bahamian because they were independent operators. Wow. Uh, listen, and uh, so there's so much in there, so much in there. to explore, because, you know, one of the questions I had was about the uh, about whether the music and cultural industry space drove the development in, of the country, particularly national identity. No question about that. Mm -hmm. No question about not only the entertainment and music industry, so did the uh, taxi cab uh, 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 independent drivers. So did the independent straw vendors and artisans. See, starting at the beginning of this era, I guess we need to start from probably going back as far as the Burma Road riots, which was in 1942, when Bahamians, well, even before that, back to Pompeii days, if you really want a true history, Pompey down in Exuma stood up and resisted the oppression of the slave masters. Mm -hmm. And him, people like Pompey, pure or uh, poor, uh, poor black Kate, which was a teenage girl in the Crooked Island area who resisted. And she was the impetus who really moved the British Parliament to talk about emancipation in the Bahamas. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Big Black Dick down in Cat Island was another slave who resisted. And then we had the Creole effect in the 1840s. Uh, uh, the Creole effect was the uh, uh, slave ship 
uh, that was uh, commandeered by the slaves on board at the time that were traversing to New Orleans. They took the ship and sailed it to the Bahamas because they knew if they got to the Bahamas, there was an opportunity that they possibly could be set free. Yeah. So if you want to start at that point, 1807 was the abolition of the slave trade, which means that any ship that was uh, uh, commanded by the British Navy were, were, uh, were, were captured, and the, the cargo on those ships were released in the co- uh, countries that were associated, or the colonies associate, associated with Britain, and a lot of those freed Africans, and that's important, were released in the Bahamas. So we always had this, uh, um, um, we always had this sense of not being a slave in the true sense of slavery. Mm -hmm. In other words, we kept those things that we knew from the motherlands, the Yorubas Mm -hmm. and the the, the, the Igbos who came here. These tribes, even though they were uh, not able to communicate uh, verbally, they were able to communicate culturally, mm-hmm. via the drumbeat, for example, yep. that they send messages from community to community by various drumbeats. And that's why I always say the drumbeat is the heartbeat of the Bahamas and the heartbeat of our music. Because if you were living in Fox Hill, or you were living in uh, Gambia, or you were living in Bain Town area, and you heard certain rhythms during certain times of the year, if the wind was blowing in that direction, mm-hmm. you would know it's harvest time. Right. You would know that a baby may have been born. Mm-hmm. You would know that a wedding may have happened, or you may even know that someone would have died. That was the way that they would have communicated via the drumbeat. Mm-hmm. So much so that once the slave masters got wind of this, they outlawed drumming in certain of these colonies because they knew it was a form of communication. But when they did that, what did our people do? They start beating on their bodies. They start making uh, uh, tambourines and other shakers and, and, uh, uh, that we know that are local among us now. Because right. they couldn't stop the drum beat that was vibrating within the soul of, of the, the people, people of our uh, ancestry. Uh, uh, we, we're getting deep with this right. history, but, I, but want, I think it's important to lay that foundation. Absolutely, but I, I want to push us back to the future for just a moment. Okay. And I want to ask you a question, because I'm not sure if I'm, I'm not even sure if I'm asking the question correctly, mm-hmm. but I know I, I'm not sure if I have the correct answer. And I'm, so I'm going to ask it very awkwardly. Did the former Prime Minister, Sir Lyndon Pinling, at any point ban the playing of Caribbean music on the public airwaves? I don't recall a banding of the music, but there was efforts made by certain personalities, a Charles Carter, for example, who always, always encouraged more playing more of Bahamian music. Back in the day, <clears throat> when he started what was called the Young Bahamian Show, mm-hmm. he was always interested in playing the music of the Bahamian artists. Many of them did not have recordings, so what would he do? He would go around to the various outlets, one of which was the Lion's Den, which was originally the Ghana Room, which was an original room at the Cat and Fiddles, on the same location where my brother was at the time, and they would record the young artists performing live. Mm-hmm. Charles would actually make those recordings, and then he would replay them on the radio station. Now, remember, there was only one radio station at that time. It was yeah. only ZNS, 1540. Yeah. And so they played a lot of other music, a lot of foreign music, and the fact that we were so close to America, Aaron, we were able to pick up the airwaves of the American stations like WMBM and WQAM and other stations coming is, out of Florida. Is that so, why we love country music so much? Absolutely. We yeah. are influenced mm-hmm. tremendously by that music. Uh, and, and that is one of the reasons why a lot of the uh, countries maybe more south of us were not so impacted because they couldn't pick up those signals. Right. 
So we picked up those signals, and so what we did, a lot of our artists started to emulate that music. For example, a classic example of it would be Pretty Blue Eyes. That right. was performed by Tony Seymour Sr. That was a remake. A lot of Bahamians believe that was an original, but that actually was a remake. The first original Bahamian music, I believe, to my mind, that went certified gold, as I said, was Funky Nassau. Mm-hmm. But before that, Eloise Lewis recorded a number of songs uh, on Decca Records. That was back, I believe, in the 40s. Eloise Lewis. Eloise Lewis, another great Bahamian uh, vocalist. Uh, she was pre-Bahama Mama. She was one of the first Bahamian female artists who performed internationally and recorded internationally. Wow. And then you have people like Bahama Mama, who actually, from what I understand, my dad, the, her name is Maureen Duvalier, the late Maureen Duvalier. Yes. My father gave her that name, Bahama Mama. Okay. And she performed at the Cat and Fiddle and created this wonderful character of storytelling. And she became a superstar among local artists, her and people like Becky Chipman and uh, um, Sweet Richard, um, anybody. I mean, if, if, if you were in the entertainment industry, you would have had some association with the Cat and Fiddle or the Zanzibar or the Silver Slipper or one of these other great Bahamian-owned, I keep emphasizing that, Bahamian-owned establishment. Mm-hmm. That's why they were able to oppose the oligarchy, in, 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 which was represented by what we now know as the UBP, United Bahamian Party, mm-hmm. because they were independent operators, and they were quite, quite successful. Now, listen, yeah. my whole life I've been jealous of y'all, mm. the older generations of Bahamians. Well, the, that's a good thing, because we, we, we had a wonderful... This is what I say. Wonderful cultural uh, era. It's nothing like watching a group of older Bahamians talk about the cat and Phil or the silver slipper and watch oh, their eyes light up. It was and, incredible. And it the, was you, really incredible. Mm-hmm. It was more than just entertainment, as I said. It was a place where Bahamians came together and felt good about being Bahamian. And, and, because and, they could see the best in the world right, right here. Right, and being a part of the world. And be a part of it. Okay, because I, actually... People who would come from the United States or other countries would not have seen these artists in their homeland. For example, somebody from Oklahoma or somebody from Arkansas or someplace, they would probably never see a Count Basie. Right. Or a Nat King Cole. Or a Nina Simone. Or a Nina Simone, but they could see them when they come to the Bahamas. Mm-hmm. Or rub shoulders with the late, great Dr. Martin Luther King, who used to frequent the Cat and Phil. I was L- a friend of my dad. Listen, listen, this is what I'm saying. So but, you see, okay... Here's where I am. I sort of moved, not even grew up, but I was introduced to the local poetry right. and music scene, right? Yeah. And yeah. there was an event, I think, called uh, Spoken Word. At, right, uh, absolutely. Right, and there was one at, um, it's one called Kuwamba at Adastra Gardens, and then mm-hmm. Spoken Word at uh, uh, King of Nights, at the, right. the spot on Cable Beach, right? right? I want to say, you know, good morning to Chrissy Love and good morning to Nadine Brown and good morning to even my boy Chris, Chris from the spot, right? Yeah, Um, well, the spot was, I mean, let me tell you, uh, the spot was really one of my favorite groups of creative um, uh, artists. Yeah. Uh, Anku and Leah. And Alan and Jones and, and and, yeah, and Jason. I mean, y'all were our Saturday Night Live. Yeah, that's what well, it was. Why, why aren't we still having this thing going on? But, I mean, remember the, the, the Ferguson's from Farm Road? Right. And your radio show. And then Anku and... We have allowed it, Aaron. Yeah, we, yeah. we are all guilty. Yeah, it's us. We've allowed it to die. And yeah. you know why we've allowed it to die? Because we are depending on the politicians to cause it to have life. We're depending that on the political... Right, we, we're depending on the political culture to give Absolutely. it value. We're going to the politicians with hat in hand begging, Mm -hmm. as we are right now, talking about our independent celebration. Why isn't every Bahamian family celebrating independence? You know why? Because we don't have enough pride to do it. Mm -hmm. We should not wait for the government to cause us to celebrate independence. We, in our own way, should be celebrating independence. If you go to other countries, Mm -hmm. yes, there is a, a big government-sponsored event, probably, but for the most part, 
people are celebrating themselves because those people in the family islands are not able to come to Fort Charlotte to watch the concert or look at the tattoo Mm -hmm. that we've been doing for the last 40 years. Mm -hmm. Every island should be celebrating our independence. Every home, every family, every park, there should be celebration. Look around us now. Look around us today. I drove through the island yesterday. I hardly see any decorations commemorating mm-hmm. independence coming up in, in a couple of days. And I, I, Why I, is that? I would imagine since, you know, with all of the pressing issues, politicians haven't seen fit to take a slight temporary pay cut yet. If I were a politician, I would take a pay cut to ensure that at the very least, every family island and settlement could have a little money in the kitty take to celebrate independence. dollars that they all have and put it into the people. Yeah. Mr. Munnings, I got a call. I got a people. I got a, I think I got a call on the line here. Okay. I, I wonder if people have questions for you. I want them no problem. to be able to ask you. No problem. Uh, the line's not working. I, I got a text here for you. Yep. Good morning, Aaron in the Bahamas at large. It is time for a hearing committee on music and entertainment and the arts. Parliamentarians would get up in Parliament and discuss just about everything else but the importance of the business of entertainment. And I am disappointed in their treatment of the live music and entertainment community. No question. That, 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 that writer is spot on. Let me say this, Aaron. Again, I say, let me be the first to say that our generation and your generation, which is a little older than the younger generation, we have failed our children and grandchildren mm-hmm. because we have not preserved the legacy that was established by my father and your father, your great father, and your beautiful mother because of their heritage and legacies. Mm -hmm. We need to say to these politicians, you work for us. And I know that so real because at the Cattenfield nightclub, the Pinling administration, when they were fledgling party, used to hold their rallies and other events at the Cattenfield. Why? Because they couldn't go into those white establishments to do it. Mm Mm-hmm. They could not go into them. So they held them at the Cat and Fiddle. They held them at the Zanzibar. They held them at the Central Highway Inn and other places that were owned by black Bahamians who supported the PLP. And what happened? Once the PLP got in power, what Um, happened? um, The history is there. Mm -hmm. They took their monies and spent them mostly in the white establishments. Mm -hmm. The Holiday Inns and the hotels, etc. And they allowed the nightclub industry over the hill to die. Yeah. So I I see we got a couple more calls on the line. Let's test these lines and see if they're coming through. Good morning, caller. You're on the clock. Oh, that one's not working. Oh, good morning, caller. You're on the clock. Hey, good morning, Aaron. How you doing? Along with you, pretty eyes. Aaron Green. Hi, good morning, Brayman. How you do? I'm all in, thank God. I have a question for you, but twice I want to say the... Freddie would say, man. All is well, Brayman, and you? I'm all in, thank God. Wonderful. What I want to say, right, before I ask Aaron this question, you talked about us celebrating ourselves, right? Right. I know what you're talking about, because guess what? Mm-hmm. That's how the Saxons started. Absolutely. That's how we... They started, started in the communities. That's right. With I'm people like you and, and, and Phil I'm Cooper I'm and Wola and others, yeah, but yeah. definitely it started in the communities. Yeah, we have allowed the commercialization of John Canoe to destroy John Canoe, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah, uh, def- definitely it was, it was Brayman. It was Brayman because I'm still here. Okay, Brayman. Uh, the thing is, uh, you know, people came in and established, uh, they, they came on our platform and established their, uh, you know what I'm saying, uh, 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 objective, mm. uh, which was very much poor. It's still poor. But we have allowed it to be politicized. You know something, you said something about how mm. we used to go to the silver slippers and, you know, and be proud to be Bahamian. Absolutely. And, and that's a fact. Yeah, man. That's mm-hmm. a fact. Yeah, man. Uh, thank you, Brayman. But thank you. But Aaron, what I want to ask you, right? Uh-huh. Uh, that, that information in which you give pertaining to Auckland. Yes. What happened to people who doesn't want to buy anything or, you know, telephone and stuff like that? What happened? What's going to happen for those people? There, is there any place 
that they get a what you would a compensation. Well, there they are, for instance, there is compensations for business license and real property tax, right? So I think there are, and this may not be an exhaustive list. So what I would suggest is to go to the website, uh, mygateway.gov.bs, and look for a full list of exemptions because there may be some other exemptions that are not about you spending, uh, purchasing things, but about paying uh, exemptions on taxes and fees. Well, I hope they don't destroy Auckland's because guess what? I born there. But look here. Uh, and, and the thing is... I would you. They, Auckland's people ain't going to let that happen. And the thing is, what uh, I understood that the way I'm, uh, they've taken all of, all of the limestone out of, out of Grand Bahama, the thing is they're cutting down the hills and that's going to cause a problem. They're taking all the hard land. I got you. Thank you, Brayman. I got to get to my next caller because I think I cut him earlier. Dear DeWitt, please call back. I did not mean to cut you. That was my bad. Please call back. Good morning, Collie. You're on the clock. I'm a pleasure. Good morning, Ms. Green. How you doing? I'm good, Sparky. How you do? Okay. Hey, Freddie. Yes, my brother. Yeah, see, see, Miss, 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 Miss Green, let me tell you something. There's so much history that Freddie can tell you that's never been written. Will I inviting <laughs> Freddie back tomorrow to continue telling me? Miss Green, Miss Green, listen to me. A lot of behemoths, like, 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 um, like the dentist fell asleep and said, he just said, put something in the book, behemoths don't like to read. They passed a lot of stories down. Freddie can tell you, the Valley Boys was started by my mother, Granny Mills. She was waiting for Mr. Malcolm out on Bay Street. Now, what happened to Freddie? can tell you history about that. Mr. Malcolm loved Joe Canoe. He was a white ma a man on um, Bay Street, uh, um, gas station on Bay Street. He, he, didn't like Joe, he didn't like Joe Canoe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So he gave my mother 16 pounds, a box of cow bells and a box of whistles. The cows were there to put, the, the bells were to put around the old cows and the whistles, right? And, and she gave Gus Cooper the 16 pounds of the box of whistles and the box of covers to start the Valley Boys, like Freddie say, in the valley. That's right. right. In the community. That's, That's where the right. Valley Boys started. That is, that is correct. And All of them were started. The Saxons then came 15 years after the valley. You see? Because the Valley Boys, Gus Cooper, as a 17-year-old going to St. George, St. John's, he, they moved over in the valley, and Gus them used to wait with Russ and Spurgeon Smith over, over the hill in Enos Lane. Boy, Sparky, I hope you're telling the truth because plenty I Saxons can pinch me. <laughs> plenty Saxons can pinch me if, if you ain't telling the truth. Well, you know, listen, Sparky knows that history much better than me. Because awesome. Because Thank contrary you, to the name association, I did not grow up in the Valley. My brother Raphael did. Uh -huh. So he obviously knows that story as well as Sparky. Him and Dr. Off, my first cousin, they, were, they grew up in the Valley. I grew up on Third Street to Grove. Yeah, And so I know about uh, the Westerners, because my uncle was a Westerner. Uh, that was a group that started in the West by people like uh, Nicky Moss and, 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 and uh, uh, the Aguilar brothers and them. And then, of course, you had the groups coming out of the East. Uh, I think the... Uh, hold the on, hold on. And the, them started somewhere in Fox Hill. Did the Aguilar uh, brothers in Junkanoo? Yeah, man. Boy, yeah, look here. Man, they had the, the, the brother Adrian Diagola and, uh -huh. and Nicky Moss, the yeah. Gas Moss Company. Yeah, okay. They, they were the leaders of the Westerners back in the day coming out of the, the Western area. Okay. And that's when the groups used to compete. The, group, the, the groups coming from the West and the groups coming from the East. And their junkano was to be two-way on Bay Street and they were trash in the middle. Right, collect, collect. Collect and collect. And collect and you get a knock in your head. With Carl Bell and Count Shell, if you did me something throughout the year, I can get you when I get on Bay Street. That was ah. like a war zone. Now, uh, Mr. Munnings, yes. I, I want to invite you back tomorrow if you're available, <laughs> because I still haven't asked you to tell us the stories that are not in the history books, right? That is true. The things that, should, that we would make a TV yeah. show out of. Well, but sneak, I, sneak one of those questions in now so we could get a preview as to what we're looking for. All right, so. but... No, no, before that, I got to get to my guess. I got okay, sure. a text here. Ask your guess how we feel about the government treatment of local artists and athletes. If an athlete win a medal, they get a road name after them. Th but that's it. Musicians get treated worse. They leave you all broke, busted, and can't be trusted. Let, let me answer it like this. Do not be concerned about the Ministry of Culture, but rather be concerned about the culture in the minister. Mm -hmm. When we put these people to represent us, 
they have no clue about most of them about what we do, nor do they appreciate what we do. My father once told me the politicians want to be like the entertainers and the celebrities, like the superstars in the athletic world, the people like Andre Rogers, for example, mm-hmm. and Lionel Rogers, these wonderful brothers, and people like the Venti Ford and Eddie Ford, these wonderful athletes, and the sprinters like uh, Leslie Miller and his brother Hardy Miller, who I believe was one of the best Miller, Miller uh, and the Miller family athletes. Um, Hardy was an incredible 400 man, and, 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 and Robbie, his brother, and, and listen, all of these wonderful athletes, Derek Cambridge and the Pioneers and Hawk Finderson and people like that, Jerry Wisdom, and then my, my, one of my favorite, Kevin Johnson. We don't celebrate our people. Mm-hmm. What about the great artists of this world? How often do you hear us talk about Wade Williams? You would know who that is. How often do they hear us talk about James Weldon Johnson and Rosamond Johnson? Mm-hmm. How often do they talk about our great uh, comedians like uh, the Gibson lady, mm-hmm. um, Pandora Gibson? Uh, that's one of your four uh, uh, runners yep, uh, yep. Uh, in the theater. Uh, these were incredible artists. But our politicians, we have allowed them, we have deitized them to believe that they are demigods to dictate to us. But let me say to the Bahamian people on this pre-independent, the politicians work for you. Mm-hmm. And you will find them over the next couple of weeks coming to you, begging you for your support. And the minute they get in power, 90% of them or more forget who you are. They change their phone numbers and they start to denigrate you and dictate to you. They are your servants. Yeah. And you should demand that they understand that they work for you. We need to educate our people. I'm not saying not to respect the politicians because they achieve a certain level of representation. However, when they move away from the promises that they make to you, when they come begging for your support mm-hmm. and begging for your vote, I don't believe in none of this foolishness of politicians are being in charge. They are the legislators. Yeah. who's supposed to make the laws that govern us Mr. based Billings. on their representation of what we tell them. And what we want and what but the country tells them. What we have allowed them to do, what we have allowed them to do is to dictate to us and we chew up and we're so polarized by colors that we're blinded by these various colors. means mm. nothing because when they get in power spending our money Billions and billions of our dollars. Now, Mr. Mannings, I got I got two calls on the line here. Go ahead. Um, caller, you're on the clock. Good morning, caller. You're on the clock. Good morning, all on the clock. How are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? Wonderful, wonderful. I'd like to join that gentleman just now that just finished talking to you. Yes, sir. Man, um, that, that's, that's, it is despicable. Okay? It's a height of nastiness. Okay? When I, when I say that, I, I mean politically mm-hmm. and the thing and the thing about it they they know what they plan to do they know that they can change those numbers when they get inside there but therefore we must get them to commit to the fact of a recall system amen brother thank you very Back much to sir. Be at the top of the list all right guys my listening audience we are quickly running out of time so mr munnings let mm-hmm. me tell you what i want us to talk about tomorrow before we go i want i want to ask you this question you're the new Minister of Culture. What's your first 100 days look like? What's your ideal music festival look like? You want me to answer that tomorrow? No, or you want tomorrow. me to tell you that right now? No, no, tomorrow, because we're running out of time. I would establish a Ministry of Culture exclusively for our people. Uh-huh. Okay. That's number one on my list. All right. And I got a whole bunch more questions no question. for you tomorrow. To my listening audience, let's start at the top of the show. L- get your questions ready tonight. And... Us young people in the audience are relying on some of y'all older Bahamians to ask the questions that we wouldn't know to ask because we wasn't sneaking out our bed at that hour to go by the cat and fiddle and see the things that was going on. But I want you all to know that we dead jealous, right? Because we haven't done as good a job of creating that environment for ourselves and other Bahamians. But I also want to send a shout out to Margot Bethel and The Hub 
who housed, who made a, created a space to house some of these very same activities that you guys were able to enjoy and has indeed, along with Anku and Chrissy Love and Nadine Brown and uh, Giovanni, all of these guys have driven the political and cultural ideologies of this country forward and into the future. Mr. Munnings Jr., I'm so excited about tomorrow's conversation, but I gotta go right now. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Yes, sir. So I will see you tomorrow morning. And as I close the show, I want to just respond to this last text. The question is, is it true that there is no Bahamian music or musicians playing at independent celebration? So let me clarify what I have learned quickly. There will be Bahamian musicians performing songs by non-Bahamian artists in a gospel-style concert at the independent celebrations. And later in the month, there will be a, another concert of local artists, our top local artists, performing secular and non-secular songs. And I think this has just been agreed upon by the government over the last couple of days. So thank you very much for joining On the Clock with Aaron Green and Mr. Freddie Munnings Jr. today. And tomorrow we're going to continue this, in, uh, this conversation as we slide in to the 48th Independence Celebrations. Thank you for joining me. Have a great day, Bahamas, and stay tuned because Levon Miller and Unleashed is up next.